Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Mikey and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the best MCAT resources that you guys should be using when you study for the MCAT. So most of these resources I used myself and the way I decided to use them was during my breaks when I was studying for the MCAT, I used to scroll through Reddit and through the Facebook pages. And I used to kind of just read what everybody would say and pick and choose what I thought was best at the end of the day. So for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm a third year undergraduate student here at the University of Waterloo in Toronto, Canada, and I make videos about productivity and education. So last week we talked about the MCAT study tips that I used when I was studying for the MCAT. You could find that link above right here, but I only briefly introduced the different study resources. I didn't really go in depth on every single one and which one you should introduce in your studying. So that's what I'm going to do today. But as you know, before we get started, we need to get some coffee. Ah, nothing like that first sip of coffee. So today's video is going to be split up into two sections. So the first section is going to be discussing the science resources that you guys should be using. So that's like psychology, sociology, uh, biology, and chemistry. And I'm going to organize those based off of least important up until the most important. Then I'm going to briefly discuss the practice exams that I used and I'm gonna explain exactly why I decided to use those particular practice exams. Now, number six on my list is the Kaplan books. Now, you could also use the Princeton Review or the Exam Crackers books. I chose the Kaplan books because I did a lot of reviews online and I found that the Kaplan books were the best bet. However, all are very good, but my own personal recommendation are the Kaplan books. And again, I only use the Kaplan books for physics. I felt that learning all the other information was useless because I took most of that information during undergrad. So what I did prefer rather than learning all the information was I did a lot of practice questions and that's what's actually helped me learn. And that brings me to my next one, which is Enki. So number five, I put as Enki because I found that using Enki was very effective for help solidifying that information. And that's what Enki does. It's basically a flashcard system that explains how everything works. I have a video explaining everything that Enki is and how exactly it works up here. I use an Enki deck called Mile Down that was made by someone that posted it on Reddit. This Enki deck is very comprehensive. It covers everything except cars. So I'm going to give you guys a quick brief overview of this Enki deck. So for example, if I do behavioral sciences, which is psychology, sociology, you could see you could do all these questions. Uh, you answer them based on how you want. They're very comprehensive. They have pictures. And if you also don't really understand it, they also have either a YouTube link to supplement it or a Khan Academy link. So like, for example, here we have a Khan Academy link. And if I press on it, it'll take me into the Khan Academy link, which I found really useful. And that's essentially what you need for the MCAT. MCAT has a lot of application based questions. Now, a lot of people say that the MCAT is a mile wide, but only an inch deep. So it covers a broad amount of topics, but it doesn't go into a lot of detail on each of those topics. And that's what the mile down deck does. It helps covers all the bases. And then once you start doing study questions, you could add from all the mistakes that you had into your Anki decks, and that'll make it a personalized Anki deck for yourself. Now, just like I said in the last video, I don't recommend that you make all your own Enki decks. I recommend using someone else's Enki deck, like the Mile Den one that I have linked below, and then making your own Enki decks from all the questions you get wrong from all the practice and the study questions that you end up doing. So now we're going to talk about number four on our list, and that's Khan Academy. Khan Academy is a free resource that was created in association with the AMC. They created a lot of videos for all the science sections that you can find online. If you look at the left over here, you'll see that they have extensive database of everything you need to know for the MCAT. I personally used it for when I was stuck on a certain problem or I didn't really understand something mainly in physics and I would just come here to help better understand the concept. Khan Academy is very important and I think it's even more important than the Kaplan books and that's why I put it higher above in the list. Now third on the list is a psychology PDF that I talked about in the last video as well. This psychology PDF is basically Khan Academy because it's a summary of everything you need to know except everything is summarized already for you so you won't have to waste your time watching the videos and that's why I rated it a bit higher. However, if you don't understand the concept, I would recommend going back to the videos because it does really help solidify the information and it helps make you understand it a bit better. Now, like I said in the last video, there are two types. One is the very long one, which is 334 pages, and one is the shortened one, which is 82 pages. Both of them are going to be linked down below. I would recommend starting off with the 334 pages, giving it a read or two reads over, and then moving on to the 82 page one so that you could summarize everything you need to know. And then, like I said earlier, you're going to supplement all of this with Anki. So obviously you don't want to go through the PDF every single day because that's gonna, just going to take too much time. 
However, if you do use the Anki decks that I provided, which is the Mile Down one or any other one that you find online, as long as it's very comprehensive, you'll be able to keep up with everything you need to know for psychology, and that's what I did the whole time. Now, the final two that I'm gonna discuss with you for the science sections are very, very important. The second best one that I think you should purchase is UWorld, because UWorld has over 2,000 questions from biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, psychology, everything, cars even, and it splits everything up in a very organized fashion. So for example, if you're having trouble with SN2 and SN1 reactions in organic chemistry, you could specify which questions you wanna be asked and create your own question bank. Now, if you ever do buy UWorld, I would recommend not timing yourself because UWorld, you're trying to just learn from it. They have great diagrams and great explanations for all the answers. And finally, the AMC bundle. Now, it's kind of a no-brainer for you to buy the AMC bundle since the company that you're about to take the test with, which is AMC, created their own practice questions, created their own full length. So of course you wanna buy their stuff because that's gonna be what's most representative of what's gonna happen to you on test day. So I would definitely recommend buying the full AMC bundle that I have linked below. It's it is a bit pricey, but if you were to prioritize what you should buy from everything that I discussed, I would say number one is the AMC bundle. Number two is UWorld. And keep in mind, if you don't end up buying UWorld, although I do recommend it, you can always use Khan Academy. They also have a lot of practice questions that you can use. Some people did like them, some people didn't. I thought they were okay. I prefer UWorld more because their explanations were better. However, if you're tight on money, then I would recommend only buying AMC and Khan Academy. And keep in mind also the psychology PDF is for free. The Anki deck that I'm gonna supplement down below is also for free. The Kaplan books are very important. However, if you don't end up buying them, it's not the end of the world. You could definitely learn everything you need to know from Khan Academy. But if you do have the extra money to spend, I would recommend also getting the Kaplan books. Now I know that this is all very expensive, but I hope that based on what I told you now, it'll help reduce the cost that you're gonna pay for your MCAT because I know it does get very pricey when you add everything up. Now I actually have one more section that I wanna talk about and that's practice tests. So I did a lot of research on figuring out what practice tests I wanted to do and to see which ones I would want to focus on and which ones I would want to purchase. And I ended up coming down to two practice tests that were kind of the best. And that was Altius and Blueprint. Blueprint also used to be called Next Step. So if you find either Next Step or Blueprint, just know they're the same company. So what I've read online is that Next Step has very good practice questions. However, their cards is harder, their chemistry is harder, biology is roughly the same, and psychology is Psychology and most practices you find won't be the same. They will all usually have extra added terms that are not very representative of the MCAT, but they are similar. Similarly with Altius, Altius had chemistry around the same, cars was totally off a lot of the questions they asked weren't similar the passages were tough reads so that i think that was important for me to practice and that's that's what i actually ended up going with which was altius uh biology was roughly the same and psychology was similar to next step now at the end of the day i ended up choosing altius because they had a deal which was 10 tests for 100 dollars. usually they have deals going out all throughout the year personally i would tell you whichever one you find for cheaper to go with that because honestly both of them are kind of the same i didn't use the kaplan practice test or princeton review because i read online that that they were actually not representative at all. Some of them were much harder, some of them were much easier. I didn't want that to get into my head and if I knew that they weren't representative at all, then I didn't even want to get into that. And then at the end of the day, AMC is the most important practice test. Like I said before, they have four practice tests as well as a sample test and then also a half practice test. So they have quite a considerable amount of practice tests. I would always recommend leaving those to the last month to month and a half of your studying and then doing your Altius or your next step, whatever practice test you end up doing. Honestly, I would say like two weeks into studying because the earlier you get on your practice test, the better you'll be able to build up your stamina and the better you'll be able to do on test day because you won't be getting tired. And I would always recommend simulating test day conditions. So that's waking up at a certain time showering doing whatever you would do on the day of the test and in the beginning it was a bit tough but then I started to get used to it and that's when I started reviewing my practices the day after and those practices helped me improve a lot so now we've reached the end of our video thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy it please like down below subscribe and turn on post notifications because it does help me out a lot if you guys do want to see any future videos or you want to see any MCAT related content in the future please feel free to comment down down below and yeah I guess that's it thanks again for watching cheers Hey, what's going on, guys? So today we're going to talk about... Hey, what's going... Then I'm going to briefly dis... Then I'm going to briefly discuss the process... Then I'm going to briefly discuss the process... Now, I would recommend always leaving those to last minute. Sorry. Don't like that. Oh...